what you're wearing, but it's intoxicating. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe it's just Australian musk or something. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> So wait, so you're a mama since the last time that you were on the show. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, there's my Look beautiful. Look at that precious little number. I know. So that's my daughter, Royce, um, oh. and she's just uh, turning 17 months today. Oh. And she's just the most precious little, little angel and I just, like, adore her. And her first word um, was mum. So I was oh, you're like, lucky. oh, and it just melted me when she says it. Oh. Um, and then now every time she like uh, looks at photos of me or sees me in a magazine or whatever, she's like, mum, mum. Um, and yeah, she's just the cutest. Like, it's girl. hard to go back to work because they're so wonderful. I know, and different things happen like every week. So like in this past week, she learned what dancing was. Yes. <laughs> and I say, Roisy, do dancing, and she starts going. <laughs> Like a jazzercise this? video, yeah. Yeah. Wait, so you got engaged since the last time that I saw you? Yes. So you proposed on Valentine's Day, right? Yes. Is there so, a reason why? Um, well, Valentine's Day was always a day when I felt like really lonely and like, yeah. like a loser. No, it can be for um, a lot of people, yeah. Yeah, because basically I never had a Valentine, like ever. Yeah. One time in high school, I sent myself flowers and chocolates. Uh, to the boarding school because, <laughs> oh, yeah, well, one class. Oh. Um, because, uh, because, like, I just never had one ever. Yeah. And then when I met Ramona, she was my first actual Valentine. Yeah. Um, and she did all the cliche things that I'd missed out on for all those years. So she got, you know, flowers and chocolates and uh, giant teddy bears and she made me hide in one room of my house. And then she, like, decorated the whole house and uh, did oh, a whole, like, sweet. every cliche thing that I would have missed out on in all the years. So Valentine's Day became quite special for us. So then the next Valentine's Day, I thought, OK, well, we, were, we had planned to go to Disneyland, like, propose there. And in the moment she saw all the petals on the, you know, and the flowers Aww. and the violinist, she, like, instantly knew and started, like, shaking and crying and... Um, That's sweet. Yeah, it was a very, it was very romantic. I mean, I know Valentine's Day is a cliche, Day. Oh, whatever. Uh, Don't engaged, let people but... run it for you. No, it's a beautiful thing, too. It's whatever you want it to be. Yeah, but it was so yeah. fun. And then we just went to Disneyland last week and we always go back to the little spot where we got engaged. That's really like, cute. Aw. Yeah. Um, so what was it like, though, when Ramona first met your mama, like meeting the, meeting the mama? Oh, so it was like I, my mum hadn't met many people that I was in relationships with. Yeah. Uh, and so this was the first woman. And so Ramona was very kind and caring and was like, you know, Sue, if there's anything that you want to ask me, anything at all, yeah, you can just, you know, just feel free to just say whatever's on your mind. So my mum, like, leans into her and goes, is that your real hair colour? <laughs> and I thought... I the thought depth. Just, yeah, <laughs> can I ask something about, you know, uh, like being with a woman or something yeah. like that. And yeah. no, she just asked about the hair colour. She was very... Uh, yeah, but my mum's my mom's awesome and she was so um, accepting of it. I come from, like, quite a conservative background. Yeah. And so out of everyone, I didn't know how my mum would take it. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, and so when I called her to say that I was dating a woman, um, she just went, oh, that's great, darling. Uh, what colour do you want me to paint the side fence? Um, <laughs> Because that seemed to be more important, you know, like she just was like, oh, yeah, of course, yeah, great. So it was like the best reaction Aww. I could have hoped for. You know why? Because a parent, I mean, you know this now, you just want your kid to find love. Yeah. That's so, the most important thing. Yeah, so thing. she was so happy, yeah. yeah, about it, which was really great. The new memoir is called Rebel Rising. It is out now. So did you always want to write a memoir? It's, see, I'm too afraid to do it. Well, I've always been a, a writer, um, and, and I did a lot of playwriting early on in my career. Uh, but I wrote journals from a really young age. I think because I saw Oprah like saying it on her show, that and yeah. I was like, yeah, if Oprah says it, I'm gonna. Yeah. Uh, and so I started writing journals. Why I don't text and drive. Oh yeah, Oprah. Oprah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so I was just like, from 15, I was like writing these journals, um, and and then so I thought. Now it came to a point in my life where I've got just gone through so much yeah. that the last point of like releasing it all. It's just to release it in a, in a yeah. book. And then I probably will go private for like eight to ten years after, <laughs> after this because I share so much in the book yeah. that I'm like, after this, uh, yeah, I'm going to... 
I don't know, go to a log cabin with Ramona and the baby or something. I have a log cabin for you. Oh, um, do yeah, you? oh. yeah, Marie, yeah. just come hang out. No one will bother you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so, so a lot of the focus, annoyingly so, has been on one chapter, chapter 23, which is for me as yeah. a, even a songwriter, like when I come out with an album, I'm always afraid that they're gonna focus on one song and it's a whole body of work. Yeah. And I'm like, this is one moment and this is just me getting what I'm getting out right now and, and people will focus. What is that like? How do you yeah. navigate that? Well, uh, I mean, I thought having the chance to write a memoir, I'm just gonna be totally open and honest about things that happened to me. And that chapter, chapter 23 in the book, if you get it, it's, um, it's just about the biggest that I worked with yeah. uh, in Hollywood. And, uh, and so it's what happened, happened to me. And, but it, the book itself, is obviously not about this one guy. Like yeah, yeah, that is in one, thing, yeah. in one chapter. And the book just covers so many areas like weight and losing weight and my relationship with food and sexuality and fertility issues and uh, the whole relationship with my father. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like, it's about so many more things. Lots of funny things, obviously, that have, that have happened in my life. You were like, in yeah. case you think it's just depressing. Yeah, it's <laughs> in case, <laughs> lots of funny stories. Like a cute one with Brad Pitt. Yeah. Uh, this is like awesome. Basically me just saying how hot he is yeah. uh, in my interactions. You would be with correct. Him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what was it like though, looking back? Because even if I look back and see like old songs I've written from back in the day, it's like a little glimpse in who you were in those different chapters, right? So what was it like going back and looking at all those? It was really interesting to go back and read the teenage ones. Yeah. Because it's been such a long time ago. And they're normally about, oh, I have a crush on somebody, but I'll never, ever tell them. Yeah. Uh, now you are. Anything. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and then, but what was really interesting is that I was kind of a pretty normal-sized teenager. I'm very sporty. Yeah. But I, I was shocked to find the number of things in my diary about weight and about, and about eating and uh, like weird comments like, oh, I ate three pieces of pizza today and I think that was too much. Or, oh. you know, that I should be healthier. And, um, and so was, I never You didn't thought, remember being that affected then? Yeah, no, because I only gained weight at about like 21 with something I have called PCOS. So I never thought I, I had any issues with weight, but it obviously did start a lot younger than what I thought. Yeah. Also, like I used food as a coping mechanism. A lot of us all do. Things Me too. Yeah. In my life, and particularly like when I came to America and started a whole new life, and um, and with uh, uh, becoming famous and stuff, and I just like really uh, relied on food, and I talk about that really in depth. Yeah. In the book. Sometimes I, I think too, it's a lack of control in so many other environments, and you can control this environment, and you feel like you're in charge of that. That's yeah. Yeah. And it was just like you know would overeat and. Uh, use it to like numb my emotions cope. sometimes yeah. uh, and to cope. I mean, at least I wasn't like a full on drug addict or something. Yeah. Um, a lot of people in my business have But what's funny though is it's addictions. a total thing though. Like it's very hard to break that habit. It's so, so hard. And then in the year 2020, I thought, okay, I'm gonna get healthy, mainly because I wanted to have a baby. But when the pandemic and everything shut down and I just like really worked on the emotional side yeah. Um, of why I was eating in that way and then, like, yeah. yeah, worked hard on it. And I'll never be, like, you're never, like, totally cured of using food as a coping mechanism, yeah. but I'm just much healthier now. I love that. Well, so one of the funny things in the book is you yeah. wanted to be a rapper, which I, I did not know, but yeah. I somehow can see you doing. Like, okay. This is real. This is not a joke. This it's is not a joke. And look how hardcore I am. I'm wearing a Mighty Ducks hat. <laughs> uh, I, I did, didn't even I, see that. Because I did love those movies. I love but, them, yeah. Flying I mean, yeah, being a girl from the bush, uh, I like, it's not like <laughs> I had any like uh, rap qualifications. Um, you love the music. I just really loved it. And there was a band called Criss Cross. It was like I, real yes. famous. You guys know them. Yes. They had the backwards jeans and the baseball yeah. caps on. Overall. And so no. I thought, well, with my sister, we're going to form a rap group. <laughs> and I think we, our name was Sisters, but with a Z. That was like, <laughs> that was hardcore. And, um, and then we basically did covers of Criss Cross songs or Will Smith was also a big at the time in Australia as a yeah. rapper. And so I just, I learned all the lyrics from the cassette tapes. They would have oh, the booklet inserts things. Yeah, and yeah. have the, all the lyrics. So I'd study the lyrics and then I'd just do it and just like do my own beats like <laughs> and like, 
And then my sister was the hype girl, who was like the skinniest little <laughs> white girl. Uh, and I made her be my hype girl. And we'd go in some local talent quests. Uh, I guess I just loved the swagger and confidence that rappers had. And I Do just, you have footage of this? I wish there is footage. And if anyone does you have footage release it. of us in Talent Quest, we never won, by the way, never, ever won a Talent Quest. Uh, but one time we got a certificate that said highly commended. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, at the certificate. It's like the green participation ribbon. Yeah. But then I remember <laughs> I just did like a photo shoot because I really thought I was going to get signed. <laughs> Uh, I, I did a photo it. shoot and, you know, wearing that kind of gear. Yeah. At, like, just like in my backyard in the bush uh, uh, with my sister and we we're trying to look all hard and everything and just be like gangster. And we just had no idea. And I wrote to record labels at the time and sent my little cassette off. Of, I had one demo song that I'd written and it was called When Skeletons Rule the Earth. Uh, and it was... Probably because I maybe just thought that that was hardcore. Yeah. At the time, it was terrible. I would really love to you to um, release that song it too. Really, it really just had one main lyric, which was, was "When skeletons ruled the earth," and it was just <laughs> talking about <laughs> skeletons ruling the earth <laughs> as a song. Um, uh, didn't get signed, um, but ye many, many years later, when Pitch Perfect became a massive hit, yeah, I did get offered weirdly really, to do like a white Missy Elliott album. Uh, Missed opportunity, ma'am. Yeah, but I said no. I got, you know, acting, acting's for me. And yeah, yeah, you yeah, have to, yeah. I know. yeah. <laughs> You're like, I am sticking with the plan. There was a vision. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I thought, I thought, no, I won't, I won't. You, should, you know, you should, you should play a white rapper. Like, <laughs> it's not great in a movie. Yeah, you could be mean, an actor. That would be easy. That would be too and easy for me. <laughs> You've already done your method for years. You yeah. have all this. But sometimes when I rap, some rappers will be like, oh, yeah, you have flow. Like, oh. They, they say, thanks. OK, well, if they're saying that, yeah. that's different. <laughs> no rapper has ever said you have flow to me. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, you sing well. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, we need another break. Rebel's book is called Rebel Rising. It's out now.